everyone to our city council meeting. Um, we are, have three members of city council present in city council chambers. The other four are on a telephone conference. I would like to have the clerk call the roll. Mrs. Campolini. Here. Mr. Fry. Here. Thanks. Mr. Hanum. Here. Works. Mr. McCann. Here. Mr. Richardson. Here. Ms. Stow. Here. Mrs. Westfall. Here. All seven members of City Council are present for this meeting. So a quorum does exist. I'd like to report to the council members there are no guests in the council chambers tonight. The only people joining us in, in addition to the three council members are Mrs. Brining, Mr. Aller, and we do have um, our IT director here tonight as well, Chuck. Um, there are no other staff or public members in the council chambers tonight. Um, I would like us to have our Pledge of Allegiance. This meeting it's led by Mr. McCann. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Agenda item three is additions to the agenda. And I do have some additions for this evening. You're gonna to wanna to save some space here. I'm adding four items under agenda item four. Four A will be an electronic meeting update report. Four B will be a COVID-19 update for the city of Sylvania. 4C will be a City of Sylvania Declaration of Emergency. And 4D will be a financial discussion as a result of the pandemic. Mrs. Westfall, do you have any additional items? Nothing, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any additional items from members of City Council? I hear none. Uh, Mr. Sanford? Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schroyer? Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Chief Snor, are you on the line? I am here, and nothing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And Mr. Allen? Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, I need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded by, it's moved by Mrs. Westfall, seconded by Mr. Hainum. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I hear none opposed, so I will take that as an approved. So let's move on to our item, agenda item four, which is approval of the meeting minutes from our last meeting on March 16th. Mrs. Westfall. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move approval of the City Council meeting minutes from the City of Sylvania meeting held March 16th, 2020. Second. It was seconded by Mr. McCann. It might be helpful for Sharon tonight trying to take uh, minutes remotely for each person that moves and seconded to say your name as you do it. Um, but it's been moved and seconded to approve these mini meeting minutes as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting minutes are approved as submitted. On to added agenda item 4A, an electronic meeting update uh, report. Um, you're all familiar with what we're doing tonight. I wanted to report to you that we did consider using Zoom late last week, but because of the FBI warning and the problems that have been going around with that, we chose not to go down that route. 
Um, the meeting does need to be accessible to the public, but we can't have a situation where the public can hijack it if they choose to. Um, we have two weeks before the next meeting, and I am open to suggestions, and we have our IT specialist right here with Chuck, of any other routes you might want us to go down. Well, I would, I, I know, Mr. Um, Hainum. Yeah, I know we are using Zoom uh, extensively, uh, that as well as Microsoft Teams. There are, uh, uh, and uh, our IT people have uh, determined there are ways to use Zoom that are secure, certainly uh, sufficient to conduct um, legal business over, over them. Um, so I'm not sure exactly uh, why we couldn't use that here. I've also been in a couple of Teams meetings, which I understand, uh, which our IT, my law firm IT department has also approved. Uh, I would, uh, I will, uh, if, met, if, if you would like, I'd be happy to make our, uh, uh, some of our IT people available to our city IT people so that we can, so that I can understand why um, we can do mediations and negotiations on Zoom, but we can't do a city council meeting on Zoom. Uh, because this is a public meeting and we don't have any secrets here. That is not the case if a lot of the uh, work that we're doing. So, um, uh, and I believe there are also measures uh, to, that are available to prevent hijacking. There are also, ma there are also matters, uh, there are also measures that, uh, particularly I know with teams where you could record meetings and play them back later, which makes for a very nice public record. So, um, uh, I don't think this is an ideal way to do business. And I know, no, it's not. And, we're, and we're clearly gonna be in this for at least two more meetings. So I would, uh, I, think we, I think we need to find another I way think, to do that. I think what we can do is have Mr. Silvernail in the room and he can call you or, and get your IT people's name if he's requesting your assistance. But I know he'll be looking for a different solution for us in two weeks and we need a, a platform that allows us to have public call-in without public interruption. The same way it would be as if they're in the room. We did post this call-in number on the city's website and Facebook today, but I probably should announce that number for anybody that's listening, that if you have a question and want to participate during the meeting, the call-in number is 419-882 four four nine seven and if you call in I will hear you announce your name but I will not recognize you to speak until the appropriate time all right other Mr. Mayor, I'll make one other observation Certainly. Uh, we we are traditionally a very friendly council and we do allow people to appear and address us uh, that and the is, council chambers are not locked tonight. I'd like to say that as well. Right. And, uh, but the way we conduct business is not required under the public meetings law. We are not required to uh, have the public participate in our meetings. We are required that they be able to observe what we do and we conduct that. And certainly, to the extent that we can accommodate people, I, I love to do that. But uh, you know, we, I think we all participated in a chamber meeting uh, last week, attended by 90 people, and there were only a very few number of individuals who were empowered to speak on that Zoom message. And uh, I would hope that we would uh, look at that a lot more closely and consider that going forward. All right, I do know that what you say, of course, is true. And many meetings I go to, there's a sign-in list ahead of the meeting. You have to say you want to speak, and there's a particular time during the meeting for public comment. I would prefer not to go there, but we'll see what we have to do. Could everybody hear Mr. Hainem all right that's um, on the phone? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's working fine, then. 
Mr. Okay. Mayor, I, I'd like to do Mrs. Westfall. Thank you. I also have used Ring Central, which is another type of a, a video conferencing option that might be worth looking into if there's concerns around Zoom. Zoom, I have not used WebEx, but that's another one that is I'm, I'm hearing good things about. WebEx, I participated with the governor last Friday, and there was a lot of trouble with that particular WebEx. People couldn't hear. It was hard to get on. Uh, but I've used WebEx in the past. What was the first one that you said? Ring Central. Ring Central, okay. You know, the problem with WebEx is that um, if people try to participate using their computer, uh, their, com their computer microphone, uh, that seems to be a constant problem. I've done a lot of WebEx meetings where we also call it in and actually mute the WebEx and talk on the phone, use the lose a dial-up call. So, but that seems to uh, there are some security advantages though to the WebEx that uh, they're a very strong security system. Okay, so that's a report how we got to this situation tonight. We will continue to look for better options before our next meeting in two weeks. But I'm glad that this seems to be working so far. Um, I want to move on to added agenda item 4B, which is a COVID-19 update. And I today posted on the city's Facebook and website a written report, but I would like to bring you all up to date and then have Mr. Aller speak to it as well. But week before last, as I'm sure you're aware, we did lock the doors to City Hall and we have not been having complaints about that at all. We have posted the phone numbers for the people inside the building. We have increased the use of our um, secure web, web dropbox, not web, our dropbox <laughs> next to the front door. And that's getting a lot more. Chief Schnorr reconnecting. Hi, Chief. Um, we are giving a report right now on the COVID-19 chief, and I'm gonna want you to speak in a moment or two about your police department. Um, we have also platooned all of our city workers, whether city hall or in the service building or in the forestry building, we have split our workers into two platoons and they report to work every other day. And if they're in the city service departments, we are having them ride in separate vehicles so that they can keep social distancing through their jobs. Um, we are providing all city services. We have not stopped doing anything at the moment. We're still providing police, fire, EMS, water, sewer, and rubbish collection. Um, and we will continue to do that. And so far we've been fortunate not to have uh, a COVID-19 exposure to our city workers. So there was a, a possible exposure in the police department that I, well, I left the chief report on. Um, things are actually very quiet around City Hall right now. We have extended the income tax deadline <coughs> to the middle of July. Um, and that, if people have a refund coming, they still want to get their return in if they Old money I probably is going to be a little bit uh, later up to that July 15th deadline. That has reduced traffic there. Um, we are still trying to do utility connections and zoning permits and all the things we normally do. Um, many of the people, certainly in City Hall, are still working at home on those off days. It does not work the same for somebody that's in the water department or the sewer department or the street department. But we do have it set up so that if there is an emergency and we need to call in more hands, they are on duty to come in even on their assigned do not report day. Um, so far we've been fortunate things are working all right. Um, I would like to now call on Chief Snore to talk about his operations for the safety services. Chief Snore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
As the mayor said uh, about a week and a half ago, the police department moved to, uh, first of all, using all of our uh, sworn officers uh, in platoons, uh, two on each shift, so that uh, on the day shift, afternoon shift, and midnight shift, no officers are, no groups of officers are working together. So that uh, the A, A group on day shift is working, the B group are on their days off. All officers assigned to the road patrol operations, which are basically all employees except for myself and the two captains, um, are working after the days, three days on, three days off. When uh, squad A is working, squad B is on their three days off. And we're continuing that rotation on eight hour shifts until the end of this uh, pandemic, uh, as far as the restrictions go, um, or until we don't have enough manpower to, to staff that model. And we said at that point we would move to a 12 hour shift um, with uh, all employees working um, one day on 12 and then one day off and then one day on. Um, that, that 12 hour shift is a more, more difficult to staff and, and much more uh, taxing on our employees. But that would be our fallback plan. It's my understanding, Chief, that the City of Oregon has already gone on that 12-hour shift model. It's a similar shift. Uh, they are using a platoon system like we are. They have many more officers than we do. So they're working uh, three 12s in a row and then six days off and three 12s. Both models have their, their pluses and minuses. Um, three 12s is a difficult schedule to work in a row. Uh, and uh, however, their, their, their schedule we're developing about uh, 72 hours per pay. Our people will rotate through a 64, 56, or 48 hour uh, pay period depending on their rotation in the process. Everybody will rotate through the same number of hours each, each two weeks as we continue on the schedule. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Aller, anything you'd like to add to that discussion? Uh, just a, a few things, uh, Mr. Mayor. Our uh, staff is on the split uh, groups, as you mentioned, and everything is, has been going fine. Uh, we haven't had any emergencies on the water side or, or, or in any of the departments where we've had to blend those two groups. So everything seems to be going fine. Um, a couple things that we have uh, that, that have changed a little bit. Um, I think everybody saw the notice about the bulk collection pickup. Uh, that was a request from Republic Services. Um, and enables them to keep, when they do the bulk collections, they have to put two or three guys into the same vehicle and, and transport around, and they ask that they be able to end that. And uh, we obliged, uh, we understand the situation. Um, and uh, on the, from an operations standpoint, we've modified our, our water operations a little bit as far as water meters are concerned. But um, those will be, it's not really a, that we've, ended any services like the like the mayor said it's just something that we did it from an operation standpoint so everything seems to be going fine uh, so far the citizens have been fantastic um, when they call in you know they uh, are appreciative of, of what we're doing and that we're somebody is still answering the phone and, and things like that so uh, it's uh, Sylvania's doing well with it as well as can be expected I guess we continue to respond to other issues, other regular city issues, whether it's utilities. We've had a couple of zoning issues we're trying to address. Um, we are getting out and doing what we can on all city fronts. Yes. Um, you need to be aware also that Mr. Aller and Chief Snore and I are spending more time on telephone conferences than I ever thought I would in my life. Um, there is a daily EOC, Lucas County EOC, Emergency Operations Center conference every morning at 10 o'clock. I listen to some of those. I think Kevin and the chief are on those almost every day. Um, tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, there will be a similar conference for area mayors. Um, that one is more efficient for me. Uh, most of the mayors listen and they appreciate the update and I can predict in advance which mayors will ask questions at the end. Um, but those are very useful. And then last Friday, there was a, a mayor's uh, video conference with the governor, which I appreciated very much. Um, that helps, he's, he's doing a wonderful job. I watch his 
press conference almost every day at two o'clock. Um, so we are spending time. Though tomorrow our mayor's thing is at two o'clock also, so that's a conflict. Um, are there any questions or concerns from members of city council about the city's COVID-19 response to date? Yes, I have a question for um, back to the services. This sounds like Mrs. Capolini. Yeah, this is Katie. Uh, do we, are we gonna go forward with shredding? Are we gonna postpone it? And also unlimited green light pickup? Yeah, the um, shred day has uh, been unofficially uh, postponed or canceled for April 18th. Um, we'll be getting notices out uh, probably tomorrow uh, online and through the social media that uh, shred day is gonna be canceled. Um, we will hold that at a later date, but uh, we rather than establish the date now, uh, we're going to uh, you know, wait and see how long we're in this and then make a determination at a later date. That's something that we can do uh, notice through a utility bill insert or something like that. Um, unlimited pickup, which is currently scheduled for May 4th through May 8th. Um, we have a conference call tomorrow with Republic Services that will kind of make the decision on that event. Um, we're anticipating that that will be um, postponed, but we don't know that right now. Uh, that, that conference call tomorrow will kind of determine that. Um, our green yard waste pickup is continuing. Um, we are uh, not suspending that. Um, our crews are doing that in two-man crews. It's typically a three-man crew, but it's two-man. Um, we have one person in the truck and one person on the back. Um, so we are continuing that service uh, as of today. Uh, we're able to continue that. So those are the ones you asked about. I don't know if it, I, I think everything else uh, has either been uh, you know, posted, if it's been canceled or postponed. Um, but those are the the upcoming events, and that that's how we plan to handle them. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. Any additional questions mm -hmm. or comments by members of City Council? Mrs. Westfall. Um, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to thank administration for the focus and the COVID uh, strategies that you've put in place. I do feel like the city is really doing very well and i appreciate you taking the time to listen in on all those conference calls that are giving you more detail about other steps happening in other communities i'm very grateful for the leadership that i see and i do feel like our community is comfortable with what's happening because we're not hearing a lot of calls we're not getting a lot of messages directed at the council members so thank you for your focus and your hard work thank you we are trying to give a message of calm here in the city of sylvania um, that's what my instructions have been to all of our employees. Let's do our jobs. Let's plan to do our jobs right, but let's not get too exercised doing it. Um, hey, Mr. Mayor, I do have one question on, um, uh, I guess, policies in the city. I've heard some conflicting uh, reports um, as far as COVID-19 goes. Um, uh, DORA is suspended, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that the state mandate? I believe it is. Dora has been suspended for some time. This sounds like Mr. Richardson here. Um, yeah. Kevin, you have more comment about that? One of the places said they were still doing it, and another place said they weren't. I thought, I wanted, I thought it was suspended too. I want clarification. That's all. Mrs. Mrs. Brining? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Patrick, the governor did suspend that. That was among the first orders that he issued. Um, was to assist with when the restaurants shut down and the, to can limit the gatherings, the size of the gatherings. Gotcha. All right, if we're ready, I'd like to move on to agenda item 4C, which is a declaration of an emergency here in the city of Sylvania. Um, in my memory, we've never done this before. I'm sure you read in the paper that the city of Toledo did it several weeks ago, and Lucas County has done it, the state of Ohio has done it, and the President of the United States is doing it for different states as we move forward. Um, and some of our 
nearby cities have done it as well as Toledo. Toledo did it out of the box because their charter reads differently than ours and to suspend some rules, whether it was procurement rules or labor contract rules or something else, he needed to do it right away. We do not have that requirement. But other cities are adopting, and I believe Oregon and Maumee have signed them as well, perhaps Perrysburg, and it is to make both the city and our residents eligible for federal emergency loans and grants. And although we may not know the full scope of those, I do not want to limit any of us uh, for not having declared that emergency. So we have uh, emailed it out to the four members of council not here tonight, and the members that are here have it in front of them. <coughs> Um, it took two pieces of paper to do this. This is not council action. This is executive action, and I'm holding it up for the camera right now. Um, it is because of the COVID-19 outbreak and the declared pandemic. It is, again, a necessary move to ensure that our residents and our city can benefit from any federal relief funds that come along. So right now, on this public meeting, I am signing this declaration of emergency for the city of Sylvania. And I'm passing it down to the law director for her to take whatever actions necessary to make it official. Um, what this means and what other communities, especially Lucas County is doing right now, is keeping a tight accounting of any additional expenses that they have that have been caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And they are facing a lot of extra expenses. They have a lot of overtime that's going on right now. They are renting facilities. They are um, planning for housing for infected first responders. Um, and they are spending money on the expectation that most or all of it will be reimbursed through federal government funds. We need to do that as well However, to date, I don't think we have had many ex special expenses to attribute to it. That doesn't mean we won't, and that's why we're doing this. Which brings me along to added agenda item 4D, financial discussion. Um, this was brought to my attention by Mrs. Westfall, who has discussed it with Mr. Hainham over the weekend, and I've discussed it with staff for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and Toby, you're going to be expected to chime in here in a couple of minutes. Uh, what we need to be cognizant that we may have additional expenses and we likely will have lower revenues coming into the city of Sylvania. I think that we will not be hurt as bad as some nearby communities like the city of Toledo may be. They have had their Jeep plant and their GM transmission plant shut down for several weeks. Our two largest employers, the Flower Hospital and ProMedica buildings and the Sylvania local schools are continuing to pay their employees and certainly the hospital is, is not shutting down. This is, we're not in fear of them reducing the scope of their work, though they have on the basis of the governor uh, eliminated elective surgery for a while, which could affect our income. Now we're certainly going to have less income coming from many of our other taxpayers around the community. Uh, I know that my employees are, are on payroll right now, but our restaurants and our bars and other type service organizations aren't. And until they get on board with the payroll protect protection program through the federal government or until they reopen, we are losing those funds. So we are more than likely going to need to discuss and come to do some decisions about our budget over the next few meetings or months, depending on how long this lasts. We do have, and we have worked hard to maintain, extra funds here in the city of Sylvania. We have a $10 million or so balance in our capital improvements fund, but we also have, I believe, about a two or three million dollar balance in the general fund for, for times of stress. And believe me, 
This is as big of a rainy day as any rainy day fund could address. So we will have to make decisions as we move ahead whether or not we want to cut down on any services or any capital improvements that we're choosing to make here in the city. We don't have, we only have one capital improvement on the agenda tonight and it is less than $100,000, well under budget, and we'll talk about that when we get there, but my recommendation will be to proceed with that one because we got excellent bids and it's a fairly small project and it's not good to delay roofing replacements, I can tell you that. Um, but I would like to open up, I would first like to hear from Toby, our finance director. Toby, you have any words of wisdom for us before I allow council members to chime in here? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to add that um, through March, uh, which is obviously uh, before all this, we're going to be affected by all this, our income tax revenues were up 8.8% versus where they were through March of last year. Um, I'd also like to add that approximately about three fourths of our top 20 income tax payers are in the healthcare, healthcare field, um, education, um, then we have a grocery store. So those are, you know, those are our main income taxpayers and um, they seem to be at this point getting hit the least by all what's going on. We do have a couple car dealerships that's up there up there that uh, we might need to keep, keep tabs on and see how they're doing. All right. Um, we, Toby and the tax department prepare uh, monthly reports that I view and we start sharing with you after we get to July. Those reports can be very skewed early in the month or early in the year because they don't have enough data in them. But this year we may have to start sharing at least the results with you so that you can follow what's going on in our revenue stream. Um, I am hopeful that we will not be impacted to a great degree, but we will be cognizant for it and take whatever steps are necessary and have been discussing at staff any of those projects or services or cost savings that we can take a look at. Again, the majority of our expenses are personnel and we have not laid anybody off and I have no intentions at this point of laying anybody off. Capital improvements are a different issue. And we will look at those in a couple of different categories as we move forward. Um, the one that's on the agenda tonight to go out to bids with is fully city funded. That's for the road improvements in the Brookfield Estates. But most of our projects have OPWC funds in them or other funds that we have gained to help leverage our dollars. And I would not want to lose those projects. I prefer to lose our local projects rather than our joint projects. So with that, I'm opening the table for direction. I'm gonna look at Mrs. Westfall, probably first chairman of the Finance Committee, but this is a time for some discussion on this, but it's very preliminary at this point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for bringing up the topic. You know, as you know, I have encouraged us to begin thinking strategically about how necessary it is to move forward with non-essential commitments until we have a very strong handle on how long this um, the stay at home order will be in place and how long it will be before we see businesses get back up to speed. Um, certainly, you know, as you shared with me, Mr. Mayor, there could be an opportunity for some good pricing on special projects, but I think we'll want to be very cautious before we make any decisions on spending money that, uh, that puts us at any risk. I did intend to and neglected to and hate to ask a question you don't know the answer to, but to check on what is the annual payroll for the city and it might be interesting to take that into consideration as we're looking at how much cash we have on hand and what that risk might be. And also uh, certainly the pay the payroll protection plan for small businesses is something that's very positive in the small business front and with the emergency declaration that we've put in place tonight it would suggest that you're hopeful something will become available to the city potentially in terms of resources at some point in time. But I think uh, we don't know how long this will be lasting and we wanna be very cognizant of our responsibility to our community citizens to lead well during these challenging times. 
Thank you. Other members of City Council? Mr. Hainham. Yeah, Mr. Hainham. I, I guess the, uh, I, it's, I, 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 I hear you when you say, when you, uh, I hear the argument that we have large taxpayers who are involved in health care, education, uh, grocery store. Uh, I think April, the, the month of April will be very interesting. I agree. Um, and I'm glad we're ahead in March. Uh, what I'm wondering is uh, what uh, risks we have in, and we can talk about this coming up. Um, number one, making sure that bids are alive long enough. If we go out for bids on these projects, if those bids are alive for 60 or 90 days, rather, I don't know what the normal term is, 60, 60, and you know, extending those 30 days might uh, be something we, we could think about. Um, and maybe uh, waiting until uh, our first meeting in May to commit to even putting a roof on the building. And uh, I hope that, uh, that our projections are right, uh, but I would we, we really well, don't have projections. We just have inklings at the moment. Right, right. I understand. And I think some, I, I fully agree with the need to be cautious. And we'll need to take a look at our, first at our capital improvements list, because some items are easier to pass on than others. Right. For instance, we have the delivery of, I believe, four patrol cars that were ordered last year, and we we're expecting them almost any time. We're going to take delivery of those. And we were supposed to have them last year. Um, but there are other issues that we may able, be able to take a pass on. And I will review that with staff and we'll be back to you with some recommendations and we'll balance that against our revenue stream. But you also need to balance that against our reserves as well. We don't have to balance the books in a pandemic here. This is when you spend rainy day funds but we need to use the best logic and the best sensibilities that we can during this period. Well, nobody disagrees with that. Uh, we, we recognize that. Uh, I've been on council during an economic downturn before, uh, and we weathered that. Uh, and that, but that economic downturn in 2008 signaled the beginning of a significant change in the funding of our uh, of municipalities by the state of Ohio. It and did. We have, uh, the world changed. And we lost a lot. Let me just remember what those were. That was the loss of the inheritance tax. And we lost local government funds. Those were the two major ones. Also, interest rates went down and the city lost a million or $2 million a year in interest. So we lost a lot following that economic downturn. And I remember that all very well. <laughs> and the stress that it, uh, that it put around this table and, yep. and in your offices. Uh, so I would just, uh, you know, my, uh, in my business, we have dramatically limited our expenditures. Uh, we're not like, I mean, we're, everybody's employed, but we have almost eliminated all our discretionary spending. Uh, for, for simple things like travel, uh, you know, and, a lot, and, and office expenses, we've dramatically cut back all of those things until we see where we are. And, and, my, uh, and all my partners and all, I mean, we're all working. We're all, in fact, uh, we're, according to the hours that I'm seeing, we're working as much as we were in the months of February and March. So, and part of that is because you know, trying times call, make, make for uh, unpleasant calls to lawyers. But it'll be very interesting to see how much of that work gets paid in April. And I think we're going to see the same, I expect the same thing here. Uh, when businesses can't, op when businesses aren't open and not, aren't operating, they can't pay uh, 
uh, you can't pay those taxes. So uh, when we get to it, I'll we'll talk about the, the roof a little okay. more. But uh, I think uh, I know you're aware of this, uh, and that's and I, I think we all are. And I assure you that come Thursday morning and the following Thursday morning at my executive staff meetings, I will expect Toby and all of my directors to start giving me some alternatives to pull back on expenses as we need to do that. Um, I'm sure there's some options that I'm not thinking of that Toby that's familiar with every line in the budget is. So we will bring some of those up and we'll get back to you to take whatever action looks like it's needed. Um, other members of council that are not, that are on the phone line, anybody would like to speak? Mr. Mayor, this is Mark. Mr. Fry, yes. Um, when Toby mentioned that we were at the point eight percent through March, what kind of dollars does that represent given the time of year? Uh, just over 200,000, Mark. Okay. And do we, I heard anecdotally from other people, and Mayor, you mentioned that, that uh, some procedures are, uh, that were elective surgeries are being postponed. Have we reached out to uh, I, uh, the 5700 Monroe facility and Flower to get a sense of what that's done to their operations and personnel? Not to my knowledge, but Bill or Toby, do you feel you have somebody you can call to, to get an inkling from them? Maybe Greg Braylock? We, uh, Mayor, it's Bill Sanford. I, I can do that. I can follow up with the uh, different medical places. Yeah, Greg Braylock might be a good place to start. He's our liaison now. Um, so we will try to do that, Mark. That's a good point. I think the hospitals are more concerned about getting too much business, and that's why they laid off the or slowed down on the elective surgeries. But let's get an idea how they're doing. And we certainly will know that at the end of each month as well, as we get our tax returns coming back in. I right, get our yeah, tax more information payroll we, reports. More coming information in. we get the sooner we can get it, the better we're going to be. All right, we will pursue that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you for that discussion. Those were some good ideas and some good thoughts and we will move forward with those. We are back on the printed agenda. We're up to agenda item five, Brookfield Estates Resurfacing Project. Mr. Aller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the uh, 2020 resurfacing project that was part of the capital improvement plan. Um, the majority of this work are going to be in the uh, Brookfield Estates subdivision. Um, it's Brookfield Lane, Fairmeadow Drive, Glen Hill Drive, and Westcroft Drive. Actually all of the streets are in the Brookfield Estates subdivision. Um, and uh, um, the estimated cost of this project is $293,584. We had budgeted $300,000 for the project and um, uh, we would recommend in moving forward. This is one that obviously we're asking for permission to advertise, so it is one that we could perhaps take a look at extending out the, uh, the uh, life of the bids and uh, go to 90 days versus 60. Um, so that's something that we could do prior to advertising. Do you have a bid date picked? Uh, April 29th. Okay, is it, is they, are the, so the ads are going to be in the paper here pretty soon, but if you have a 90 day, uh, but they must hold their bids open for 90 days, that would take us May, June, July, it would take us to the end of July. Yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty good. I, do you think that will hurt us in the bid department by doing that? I know that I've had architectural bids where an owner will say, well, we're going to bid it now, but you can't start for six months and the bids come in really high because of the unknown factor. Three months is not bad. An extra 30 days is not bad. Yeah, I, I, don't, think it, I don't think it will because I, I think with knowing with what's going on in the, in the ODOT world, 
and the way the state are, is handling their uh, maintenance, what they consider their maintenance projects, um, I think we'll be able to still slide in uh, before those projects hit the street. So I think uh, we'll still be okay with that. All right, further discussion from members of city council? Hearing none, Mr. Fry. We need a motion to authorize the clerk to advertise for bids. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion uh, to authorize the clerk to advertise for bids for the Brookfield Estates Resurfacing Project. Second. Um, it was seconded by Mr. Hainan. All in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I hear no opposed, so the motion carries and the clerk has advertised for those bids. Again, they will be due on April 29. Moving on to agenda item six. Uh, the service director has taken bids to replace the shingle portions of the roofing, the mansard roofing on City Hall and the front uh, office wing of the courts building. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, we received four bids on this project. Bids were taken on uh, April 1st, 2020. Uh, the uh, lowest and best bid was submitted by Overhead Roofing and Sheet Metal of Toledo, Ohio, uh, with a bid of $98,192. Um, as you can see, we were almost 22 or 20 percent, excuse me, uh, under the engineer's estimate of $122,000. Um, we hadn't, we don't do a lot, a whole lot of roof work uh, in the city, and uh, we hadn't uh, really dealt with overhead roofing in the past. But in the reference checks that we made, um, got nothing but uh, positive responses with their work, uh, workmanship, and uh, paperwork, and management, and uh, everything as far as a project is concerned. So, um, the. Uh, Project is something, the uh, shingles on that, on that building, on both buildings are almost 30 years old. Um, we have had a couple pretty uh, significant leaks uh, in the past year and a half. And um, while I certainly understand the, the previous discussion and the concerns, um, this is a project roofing uh, can, you know, can, it, it's just gonna get worse. Um, and, uh, you know, it could, cause some, some major damage if, if it were to leak in the wrong places. Um, so I, I would recommend moving forward with this one uh, with the uh, great bids that we got um, and the uh, fairly limited amount of, of funding that it, it would take out of, a, out of the capital improvements budget. But I do recommend moving forward on this one. I would like to share with Tom <coughs> that I've taken four bids on public works projects in the last three weeks. Uh, they were for school projects, school improvement projects that need to take place during the summer months. And every one of those has had lots of bidders and lots of competition because private money is pulling back and being cautious right now. There's no doubt about that. Um, but this is a price you would not have gotten probably last month. And it is needed work. And because of, it is under $100,000 and so far under budget, I agree with Mr. Uh, Aller's recommendation that this project be authorized to proceed. Is this one of them that you have 60 days on, Kevin? This is 60 days, yes. And so we'd have another month and a half or so if we wanted to. Um, and in some ways it's good to get them started on this while they're not busy doing other jobs. We'll get a faster job because they'll have their whole crew or multiple crews to work on it at the same time. But I am open to council's wisdom on this one. I guess my question would be, when do you, when will they, when do you anticipate they will begin this project? Uh, I can't answer, I, I, didn't, I did not get a start date from them, Mr. Hingham. Um So I, I can't ask, answer that definitively. Um, I do know they were excited for the project, so I'm yeah. anticipating they have the crews available. So, I, I mean, I, I'm sure construction projects and social distancing raise all sorts of interesting issues. Yes, uh, which might make the project take longer than. Uh, I mean, I, 
I've seen hordes of <laughs> hordes of young men on roofs before. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably won't be doing that. It would that. be different. Yeah. And and yeah. we'll we will uh, talk to them about that and get some assurances. Oh, absolutely. In that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Because I assume that we probably don't have any language like that in our bid document. So. Uh, that's a that's a state order though now. It is. <laughs> But uh, you know, I, I don't want to be the the uh, employer that had the contractor not comply with it. So yeah, no, we do not want to be in that right. condition. I, I can tell you that one unique problem that I know is going on is that by the union mason contract, it takes two masons to lift a 12 inch by 16 inch by 8 inch concrete block into place, and you cannot maintain social distancing with two guys handling the same block. <laughs> um, so that's a real problem right now. Um, I'm sure you all noticed that work on SOMO is proceeding quickly. They've got most of the east or most of the west tower roofed. The windows are in it. Um, they are proceeding really fast there. Other comments from members of city council? Not hearing any, you do have in your council packets Ordinance 18 2020 to authorize this contract. Ms. Stow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 18 2020. All members of council having received copies in advance, I will read by title only. Accepting the bid of overhead roofing and sheet metal and awarding this contract for the administration building and the Pennsylvania Municipal Court Roof Replacement Project same, authorizing the expenditure for the improvements in the amount of $98,000 Appropriating funds, therefore, uh, this will be the second and third reading and the clerk and the Second. second. Was moved by Ms. Stow, seconded by Mrs. Westfall that ordinance number 18, 2020 be read by title only and the second and third readings be waived. All in favor of that indicate by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Final passage. I move final passage of ordinance number 18, 2020. Second. Been moved, it, it was moved by Ms. Stow, seconded by Mr. Hainum for final passage of Ordinance 18 2020 as an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Those were, I think, let me do that again slower. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no opposed, the motion carries and Ordinance 18 2020 is approved. We'll now move on to Agenda Item 7, which has to do with the installation of noise walls along US 23. Um, we have talked about those in the past. A lot of these are along Box Lane, um, up on top of that raised grade right there. Mr. Aller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, this, uh, as you know, the noise walls are going to be extended from where they uh, currently end at the uh, US 23 and I 475 um, junction, uh, if you will, um, and extend north uh, basically to the Michigan line. Um, obviously, a portion of that is within the city of Sylvania, and this le legislation just provides ODOT the consent. Uh, to perform that work within the city limits. Um, the uh, first phase of that work is going to be in the section south of Monroe Street, um, and that will occur uh, late fall, early spring, uh, late fall of 2020, I'm sorry, uh, through the early spring of 2021. And then the second phase of that project will take, will include all of the work north of Monroe Street and that'll take place in late 21 or early 22. Um, but this is uh, consent legislation that we've done on other projects when they've done them within the city of uh, Sylvania 
and it's just uh, authorizing them to do so. We would recommend approval. We have seen <clears throat> proposals for the design of those noise walls. Um, they do have trees on them. They are different from the maple leaves that are down near Central Avenue and I think more attractive than those. They are tree reliefs, pretty intricate tree reliefs in the concrete designs. And I very much on board for those. All right, discussion. Just re refresh my recollection of what our residents know. They, we have public, there's a public availability session. I just, I don't remember exactly what we did. Here. Yes, public, uh, public was, we had a public meeting. Uh, didn't right. require a public information meeting, but we had a public meeting uh, where we talked with the residents about it. ODOT has contacted all of the property owners directly that are directly adjacent to the walls and they had input on what was going to be on the side of the wall that faces them. Okay. Um, and so they've picked the design uh, colors and things of that nature. Okay. okay. I, I knew that I knew there'd been a public outreach, but yeah. I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> okay, we do have a resolution in the council packet, resolution third 12, excuse me, resolution 12, 2020, to give the city of Sylvania's consent to moving ahead with this construction. Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to introduce resolution number 12, 2020. All members of council having previously received copies, I will read by title only. A resolution of the council of the city of Sylvania consenting to the Ohio Department of Transportation's construction of type two noise barriers on a stretch of I-475 and US-23, waiving the second and third readings and declaring an emergency. Second. It's been moved and seconded that resolution number 12, 2020 be read by title only and the second and third readings be waived. All in favor of that indicate by saying aye. 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 No. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Final passage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move a final passage of resolution number 12, 2020. Second. It's been moved and seconded for final passage of resolution 12, 2020 as an emergency measure. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and resolution 12, 2020 is approved. Moving on to agenda item eight, committee reports. There was a safety committee held on March 19, 2020. Mrs. Westfall. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's correct. A safety committee meeting was held March 19, 2020 at 8 a.m. with discussion on the in-depth report of the COVID-19 along with staffing contingencies for the city. This did take place prior to our discussion this evening, so some of the things in here might feel a little outdated, but much of it is still very relevant. Uh, present at that meeting were committee members, myself, Mary Westfall, Mark Fry, and Lindsay Stow. Brian McCann was excused. Others present were Doug Hainham, Katie Capellini, Leslie Bryan, and Kevin Aller, Chief Schnorr, Chief Ram, and Mayor Stow. Uh, city administration, after, being, after introducing the meeting, city administration confirmed that action had been taken to stop all water shutoffs, that all buildings were being closed to public access, but employees were still coming to work. Employees were observing social distancing recommendations. There was, had been some relaxation on sick leave policy, and they did anticipate further restrictions as time moves forward. There was some anticipation that employees may work from home at some point, and um, with regard to the court system, it was noted that the city does not make decisions regarding the court system. Chief Schnorr did address the group and indicated that police staffing at the time was, current, was working the traditional format of three shifts per day, but that he did, uh, the department always maintains a 12-hour emergency plan. In a worst case scenario, staffing could work with three or four sworn officers per shift if necessary. Dispatch was currently still housed her, here, 
and working with law enforcement. At the time, the police department was prepared to implement the platoon type format, keeping all police officers working with the same group per shift, so as to avoid cross-infection in the case of an officer contracting COVID. A chain of command succession is in place and the police department does have access to needed personal protection equipment. Currently, no officers were on leave. We, uh, the police department was cleaning the patrol cars daily as well as uh, the buildings in the city were being cleaned every day and restricted access to buildings. Chief Schnorr did confirm that mutual aid community support is in place so that if there was a need for backup, he was confident that we would be on solid ground. Chief Ram also shared some thoughts with regard to uh, the COVID um, epidemic or pandemic and how that's impacting the fire department. He is confident that staffing is adequate and provisions are in place to ensure continued maximum response times to calls. And he did indicate that COVID testing is beginning at Toledo Botanical Gardens. The meeting adjourned at 8.58 a.m. Any other comments from anybody that I missed? That's the report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional committee reports to be made at this time? Hearing none, are there any items for committee referral? Are there any additional items for discussion this evening? There are no informational items to share with you tonight, so is there a motion to adjourn City Council? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. McCann. It was moved by Mrs. Westfall, seconded by Mr. McCann uh, for us to end our meeting this evening. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes and this council stands adjourned until its next regularly scheduled meeting two weeks from tonight on Monday, April 20th at 7.30 p.m. Thank you all for participating in this new format. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you.